Hello, it's Alison Mead from Silicon Bullet here with another instructional video. This time we're looking at Sage 50 Cloud. And I saw a question today on one of the forums I'm part of about how to edit recurring entries on Sage. And I know recurring entries is something that a lot of people don't actually use at all in Sage 50. So I wanted to just quickly take you through the general uses of it and how to get it all set up. So if you see something like a direct debit on your bank account every month, maybe the bank charges, maybe it's just a set amount, you've got a loan repayment or something like that, you can set these up as recurring entries in Sage 50 so that you don't have to enter them from scratch every month. As a bookkeeper with several clients, I also use this for things like the PAYE payments um, and even some director's salaries, dividends, that kind of thing. Even if the amount differs every month, I still might set up the recurring entry because what that means is I can set up uh, the description, what nominal code and where it's going, and it posts as a reminder so that I can then update these. So when I've got my back statement in front of me, you first need to highlight the bank account that you want to go to in the bank accounts area of Sage. And then at the top, you will find the recurring items window. This then gives you a list of all the recurring items you already have set up. To set up a new one, you can choose add. First in here, we're gonna make sure that we've got the right bank account. Then you might do the nominal code that you need. So for this example, I am going to use bank interest received in here. The transaction type. So if it's a direct debit or a standing order or something else going out, then that's the one that arrives here by default, bank, cash, credit card payments, direct debit, standing order. But you can also have recurring journals, customer payments on account, or supplier payments on account. You can also have receipts and transfers in here as well. So I'm gonna do a receipt. Now you'll notice when you change the option in here, it gets rid of your items at the top. So slightly um, not notional on how to do this. So again, I'm gonna put bank current account and then I'm gonna go down here to my bank interest received. I don't like to use the transaction reference of DD forward slash SDO because if you've got lots of direct debits and standing orders for similar amounts, then that isn't going to help you find it later. So I like to type in, if it's a bank receipt, the bank that it is in there uh, or the name of a supplier or the name of a customer because I find that helps me more when I'm doing my bank reconciliation later and then I'm going to put the word interest in there. You can, of course, add the department as well. You want to say how often it is. So mostly these things are monthly. So we're saying every one month, but you can do daily or weekly. Set it to the future date. So I'm going to set this to start on the 1st of December. And then you say how much it is and enter your tax codes in here. So with something that is the same amount every month, then that's really easy. You can set it up. I'm going to do four pounds and then I am going to do T9 as this does not involve any VAT and I don't want to appear on the VAT return. I do use this, though, for items with variable variable amounts as well, because at the time when you enter them into your Sage, then you can edit the amounts at that point. So if I say OK now, that has set that up and you can see it's added as a new item. If I needed to come back, I've realized it's wrong or something like that. I can just click on it, click on edit and I can change any of the information. If I've got one where um, something like council tax, which goes out from April until January, but then no payments are made in February and in March, you can suspend the posting for a couple of months and then bring it back and edit the date later. Okay, so I've entered that in and now I want to process it. So if I click on the process button, it 
is bringing up ones that are warning that some have passed their finish date. That's absolutely fine because when you set these up, you can either set them as perpetual, you can set a finish date, or you can set that you want it to run, say, 12 times for one year and then to stop. OK, this is now going to bring up all of the standing orders that I've set up that are up to the date that I've put in here. So you'll notice my new one for the Barclays interest isn't appearing because I've set that 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 doesn't have to start until the 1st of December. I would go through and double check that all these quantities that I want and tax codes are correct. And as long as I am happy, I can hit post. But there's nothing stopping me wanting to do this in advance again. So if I hit process again, it had automatically put today's date in there. But I want to make sure that I'm going to do this one in advance for the 1st of December. You can move this date to whatever date that you like. And then you can see the ones that are valid will come up into the system. If I then decided that I didn't want to post this one from the 28th of November because that one is actually finished now, what I would have to do is cancel out of this screen. Go to the one for my higher purchase and suspend it. And then I'm going to do that interest one there as well and suspend that. Come back into my processing. Going to put in the 1st of December. There and now you can see those two higher purchase ones don't appear because they have been suspended. If it's a variable interest rate, I would make sure I waited until I got my bank statement before I entered this. And at this point, you can edit the amount if it's slightly different. But at least I've not had to remember who I want to put it to, what the details are to rekey, the nominal codes or anything else. So it can still be a really good shortcut. I have one client that has about 30 direct debits and standing orders going out on the first of every month. And if I had to sit and key those in every month, it would be a real pain in the neck. So what I do with them is I bring the screen up with my list of the 30 in. I actually send it to Microsoft Excel. So I end up with a list and I will just double check through that none of the quantities have changed for this month before I then come back in and post them all. So that's another quick tip if you have a lot of standing orders on your account. I'm going to post that now. You can always then see in here the activity of the history of what you've used to post in that recurring entry, which can help as well just to make sure that you're seeing the history of what has changed. If I then realized that this payment in here was wrong and I need to change it, once it has been posted, I cannot change anything in the recurring entries, recurring items box. What I would have to do is close this screen, come to my transaction listing. I would sort this in transaction number order so that the one I've just put in at the top and then I can edit it in here if I need to correct any mistakes. On this edit transaction screen on the front screen, I can change the bank account, the reference or the description or the date. But if I actually need to change the nominal code or the amount, what I need to do is click edit again down here and then I can change the nominal code add a department, change the net and tax and change the tax code and save those. So I hope that is a useful quick rundown of the recurring entries of how to find them in Sage and maybe a useful application of them. If you would like to have some help with your Sage that's more bespoke and some handholding and walkthroughs, then I can log in remotely to your system and help guide you through the best way to use Sage 50 for you in a handholding session. Also, there's more hints and tips if you subscribe to Silicon Bullet on YouTube, or if you prefer seeing things more in a written form, then go to blog.siliconbullet.com. And I also have my new Bookkeeping Basics podcast, which you can search for on any podcast platform. If you want to get in touch, 
go to blog.siliconbullet.com and there's contact me items there or look for me, Alison Mead, on LinkedIn and on social media. That's me signing off now and I hope that's proved useful. If there's other walkthroughs that you would like to see, please leave a comment here and I'll add them to my list of videos to record.